what's going on everybody, it's JB here and I'm in a very, very upset and bitterly angry mood. Um, basically I want to have a little rant at Michael Irvin's performance. We lost 2-1, Burnley have lost 2-1 to Watford as you know and some of you may have heard on the JB Pride YouTube channel this afternoon and I said all my anger and vented all my frustrations out at um, referee Michael Oliver. I've also seen the replay back in match of the day and I'm very, very angry with Alan Shearer and Ian Wright for defending Nyan with his challenge on Stephen Ward just seconds before Henrik. Just missed it was a mistimed tackle. I I can't for the life of me believe that Henrik got sent off. Yes it's not a brilliant challenge, but it's not a malicious challenge. I've seen far worse punished with yellow cards and it absolutely annoys me when this happens I just really am sick of Burnley's sick of Burnley on the troubles getting absolute tosh decisions against us we get Nap all two weeks ago we played Arsenal we lost to a penalty which should never ever have been given Lauren Koscielny cheating to con John Mossy to give him a penalty against us you know, what's all that about? We got done again. I think we got... I think there were certain decisions that didn't go our way against Manchester City, although we were playing against 10 men. I am absolutely an annoyed and cheesed off with Michael Oliver. Right? The referees, right? Mike Dean, another, another appalling display from him in the first half. So much so that I call for him to be sacked as a referee. And I've done the same with Michael Oliver because the, the, the consistency is there from certain referees, but it's a poor consistency. And obviously I want to go on to the broad subject of the referees because some of them have been making very, very appalling decisions in recent weeks and I'll touch on two or three of them. Um, obviously I've touched on Mike Dean a couple of times, John Moss, I've already gone out and ranted about myself in previous streams, Craig Pawson, I've I've had a go at him previous weeks as well. Um, so there's quite a number of referees that have not escaped the sharp end of my tongue. Um, but first of all, I am very bitterly disappointed as an ex claret I thought Ian Wright would have a little less contempt for us than for Jeff Henry. He's a fellow, you know, he's supposed to be a Burnley legend, getting us up for the championship a few years ago, you know, scoring us some crucial goals. He's supposed to love the club. But I'm sorry, Ian, I'm sorry, Ian Wright, but. You've just sold, you've just sold, you know, you've just, you've alienated the fact that any fans, as far as I'm concerned, because that was never, never sending off. Not in a month of Sunday. I can't believe you said that. And I can't believe you defended Nyan for his challenge seconds before. I've got to admit, I didn't see the challenge. I was too busy looking at other scores. I was live and uh, I had a duty to keep people up to date with the, um, there were scores around the country, there was a few early goals, so I was trying to keep people up to date. Um, I was... I did look at the replay a bit, and it should have been a red card, straight red. Uh, but yet, Henrik commits a less challenge and gets away with Scott Free. Uh, well, doesn't get away with Scott Free and gets a red card. I think Michael Oliver was a bit trigger happy uh, with his cards today. I was, I was disappointed that he got the red. I was shocked and surprised, to be honest. Um, appalling decision. Appalling decision. Not good enough by heart. But that wasn't the end of the, the horrible decisions against my team today. Uh, about 20, 15 minutes later, there was an incident involving Olivas, who was, in, who was involved in the in the, the sending off. I actually think he, he I think he made a bit more than me. Like, yeah, he was fairly injured, I get that. And a lot of people will probably say, well, he was injured. But yes, of course he was. But not not to the extent where he was, where he had to roll around 63,000 times as if he was shot by Lee Harvey Walpole. Sorry, but I'm not buying that. Yeah, I can, I buy that the fact that he's injured and he got a little bit of a, you know, but I mean, fair days. I mean, it was a committed challenge. I mean, the physicality has gone out of the game. Henry's gone in there to win the ball. That's his only intention. He's mistimed it by a fraction. He hasn't gone out to win your Oliver. And all the has just made it. These foreign players, they make they just con the referees into giving decisions against the opposition. It 
it really irks me as a traditional football fan. You want to see a bit of blood and thunder. And if you're going to get red cards for challenges like that, then I'm sorry that the physics, you might as well make football a non-contact sport because that, I'm afraid, was an appalling decision. It's not a dangerous tackle. Nyang's, Nyang's was a dangerous tackle. And the next incident I'm going to talk about, that could have ripped George Martin's head off the book. I'm sorry, but how is Olivas allowed to get away with a yellow card? Or with a yellow card? Well, basically, going stood <laughs> first on Joey Barton. That's more of a red than the Henrik one, you silly son, Oliver. Absolute joke. Absolute joke. I, I, I cannot believe. I cannot believe he hadn't sent him off. I'm, I was. I did the commentary. I was. I was bitterly, bitterly angry. I'm bitterly disappointed. I'm bitterly, bitterly frustrated um, that that wasn't given uh, as a red card. And then, absolute, absolute disgrace. Um, the those three decisions in the first half really summed up his crap performance, basically. And I make no, I make no apologies for swearing. I know I, I will apologize. Well, I make no about swearing but I do apologise so if there's any few watching do forgive me I, I'm not, I don't normally swear in my videos but I'm so pent up it's been 8 hours after the 8 or 9 hours since the game and it's just I'm still pent up I'm frustrated I'm angry I'm disappointed you know it's you know and then Watford arguments could have been down, they should have been down to 9 men Watford they were puggerish all the way through the game um, they got away again um Got away with one or two other bits and bobs in the first half. It was just, it was just horrible. They were horrible. They were, they were a horrible team, Watford. I mean, you know, I've got respect for them as a football club. You know, the Grants and everything. I, I respect them for that and the way they've been, you know, the way they've treated the Grants and and you know, you've got to applaud them for that. But that aside, they are horrible, overzealous. Cheating set of scout scumbags. I'm sorry, but I, I can't accept their their tactics today. Um, the two goals I won't moan about because they were bad defending. I mean, the first goal, Dini, ten minutes gone, Dini the goal, bad play from Lawton, should be a lot stronger. The second goal, of all the ironies, all of us got the cross in and. That just works out in the wound, but having said all that, it's a great finish from my hand, but where was Michael Keane? That was disgraceful defending, and that is that is unacceptable, I'm afraid. Unacceptable. So, we were 2-0 down at half-time, Watford arguably at that point. At the time, I thought they should have been down to 10 men, now looking back, they should have been down to 9 men. But then, and then Oliver's day got even worse, I thought, after the game. He should have, I think Dini should have been booked for uh, having a go at having a go along at Matt Lawton. And Lawton didn't really do anything wrong. He fouled Matt Lawton and then proceeded to have a goal. That's not setting a captain's example. That's just sheer stupidity from Troy Dini. Um, um, also, also, Sebastian Crudel should have been sent off in the second half as well for two incidents. Uh, firstly, a penalty that wasn't given, I don't understand why. Barnes is clean through on goal. Prudel's pushed him over and he's just inside the penalty area. There's a bit of a shirt tug. He's the last man. Not only does he not give the penalty, not only does he not give the penalty, he also lets Prudel get away with blue murder. It's a clear red chuffing card! How on earth is that not a red card? It's a straight red under FIFA rules, and I'm sorry, Mark Lovers, but who, who claims who, who's supposed to be a FIFA referee and has been for four years now. I'm sorry, mate. Uh, I'm sorry, mate, but if I was assessing you, I'd, 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 I'd recommend that you are employed, put you on the goal, goal queue the next day because I'm sorry, you, that's just, you know. You, uh, it, it also got worse. I mean, the only good decision he made throughout that entire 90 minutes was to give Burnley a penalty for handball, ironically against Prudel, and it was deliberate handball. Again, should have seen red. 
I mean, we got the penalty and Barnes converted it really, really well, but it should have been a red card. So we should have been playing arguably against nine men. But I want to look at the broader picture of refereeing at the moment. I've had I've done two commentaries on two early games this week, and and on both occasions, the standard of refereeing in both games has been nothing short of abysmal. Um, in the first half on Tuesday against Leicester, I thought Mike Dean was a shambles. We played a bit after half time, to be fair. Um, the winning goal that we got. A little bit lucky perhaps, but uh, he used his chest and he, he, he was an accidental handball. Uh, the ball to hand, he didn't know that the ball struck his hand, he just he was just wanted to put the ball in the back of the net, which he did. But I don't think he intended to hand the ball and came, he ricocheted off his chest and his arm and, and stuff. And that's when the match of their pundits got it right. Uh, today, the match of their pundits got it so wrong. Ian Wright and Alan Shearer are just a bunch of overrated has been as far as I'm concerned, certainly Shearer, uh, I've got a lot of contempt for the club because his, of his connections that down the, playing for that other lot down the M65, I love the engineering name, but they've got Judas as manager and I hope they get relegated to League One, um, <laughs> but that side, I thought the fun was for four tonight, and I was, the answer to the game, I've had, a, I've had a go at that on Twitter, I've had a go at Shearer on Twitter, but I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't follow him with any he just presents the programme, he probably had a little bit of sympathy, but um, I would, I, I just, I just don't understand the referees, I think they are appalling, they're bad, there's only one good referee I think in the Premier League, and that's Mark Clattenburg, I think he's our best referee in, in this country, I think he's the best referee in this country, uh, but the rest of them, I'm afraid to say, Craig Paulson. Let me just run through it all for you. Craig Paulson's appalling. Jonathan Moss should have been fired from a ref being a referee a long time ago. He was, um, he, he, he's given some very appalling decisions against us. Um, Mike D. Not just decisions against Burnley, however. You know, he's given some bad decisions. Um, you know, I think in the previous match he refereed before, before Burnley against Leicester, he gave some very, very stupid decisions in Barnes' Bar Bar win all the leagues from the weekend before. So why was he assigned that game? I thought he assigned a Premier League game after such... I mean, he's not on the goal to you. I think he's just passed his cell by a bit. Um, Martin Atkinson, he's made one or two rickets as well, although he does give... although he's a lucky omen for the better for the Pirates, so I won't knock him too much. And today we've got Michael Lyder, who oh, up until about a year ago was actually one of the best referees in the country. I was challenging Mark Pattenberg for being the best referee in the country. But I think his stock is gone. He's 31 years old. I think he's, I think he's not good enough to be a, referee, a top quality referee. Um, I'm, not, I'm not having any more of this referee. I don't really want to come on here every other week and start fan mouthing any more officials because I've got better things to do in my time. But if my team have been conned out of a few out of certain decisions during a football match, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something, I'm gonna say what I think. Whether fifty percent agree with me or the other half agree with me or another fifty percent disagree with me, I don't care anymore. I want to see referees make fair, proper decisions and also I'll just repeat what I said several months ago after the Arsenal home debacle when Kishomi did his hand of God impression. We want, I want to see the Premier League make it compulsory, and I'll reiterate that again because I've gone on and I want the Premier League to actually, because if it's compulsory for managers and one or two players to do interviews afterwards, post-match interviews afterwards then the referees should be held to ransom to do them interviews. They should be, they should be an obligation. They shouldn't need to be protected. I'm sick of referees demanding respect when they can't make the simplest decisions. You know, I buy that the fact that they're human beings and they're not robots. I get that. But there are some refereeing mistakes in recent weeks that have been basic refereeing mistakes. The linesmen have been appalling. They've got these walkie-talkie communicating things. 
I don't really use them half the time. You know. You know, it's just the officials. Uh, I mean, I think there has to be. I'll be honest with you now. I'm going to sign off this video by saying this. I think the FA need to look at a new infrastructure. If we're going to get more referees into football, I think the mould of the way we train a, ref, a potential referee up needs to be smashed. And they need to understand fully and simply the laws of the game. Because quite frankly, there's some referees out there who are in it for themselves. They're professional referees. They're paid to referee a football match fairly and squarely. And I think a certain few, like Mike Dean, like Mike Oliver, like John Moss, obviously blatantly don't. And we don't need these. We don't need these rats in the game. We don't need them. We need referees who are strong enough and not weak well like some of these referees we've got at the moment to make the decisions, make the right decisions. And uh, referee the game is fairly and squarely, but we've got a lot of we've got a lot of referees out there who are very, very substandard. Uh, and uh, quite frankly, if they made a mistake in a factory or an office or anything like that, they'd have, been, they'd have had their peak off the prize right now. And I think one or two of them should be thankful that, they, that their employers haven't um, given them that cards. Because if I was assessing two or three of these referees today, I would have I would have said, right, you're off down to the job centre for seeing Monday because, sorry, you can't, you honestly can't referee. There's, and there's some referees that can't referee. but. The FA and the professional, whoever, whoever bloody employs these muppets to referee football games, uh, need to look at a way of getting better referees through, get a better understanding of the rules of the game, and also the Premier League and the Football League need to get some structure in place where it's compulsory for a referee to come out in front of the media, written press, television, whatever come out, make it an obligation for them to explain why they did it, whether it was a bad decision or a, bad, or a good decision, good or bad, doesn't matter what it is, and, and they have to explain, because quite frankly, if managers and players have to explain themselves to the press after the game, then I think the referees do, and I, I think the referees have to as well, it's no good wrapping a monkey cotton wall, because they're getting too much protection as it is, and the only respect they'll get from me is when they start getting easy and and uh, the simple decisions correct. If they do that, that's that's 50% of that's 75% of respect garnered back. They get back, you know, and that is a high percentage. It's better than 0% percent they're currently getting right now, and that to me. You know, these referees, they get paid a bloody fortune, they've got to do their jobs properly, and if they don't, then I've had enough. But I'm very, very disappointed the way the cops have been treated today. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm angry, I'm very angry, I'm sick of having to come here and accuse referees of being unfair. Michael Oliver, you have been a disgrace to the refereeing fraternity today. And I want you to apologise to Burnley Football Club, to Sean Dyke, and to the Burnley fans for three things. One, for not sending off Nyang. Two, for sending off Henrik. And three, and three and more important, well, four things now. Three, for not sending off Holly Bass for an absolute disgraceful high foot on Barton, which was a red card, by the way. I'm not having any of that. It's not a yellow. It's a Dale on red. Worst challenge of the lot. And Prudel for a deliberate handball. I want you to apologise for all those four things, but he won't look at this video. He'll think, oh, he's some idiot talking on YouTube. And he probably thinks, he'll probably think that, and probably the majority of people who watch this will think that. But this is me, a, a passionate football fan. This is a billion pound industry. Burnley have got there through hard work. We've got to 29 points. We should be on 32 now. And looking up at possibly a Europa League place, which is probably being a bit greedy, but uh, you know we should be looking up, not down again. And it's due to the actions of Michael Oliver that are in this position. That's where I'm going to end it. Thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you haven't subscribed, please do. My Twitter address is at scutsy83. But for me, JB, uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. But I'm very, very angry.
I'll see you later.